Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. For the third time in as many months, Islamic terrorists have massacred British citizens. First, the truck attack outside Parliament in March. That killed seven. Then two weeks ago, a suicide bomber murdered almost two dozen in Manchester, many of them children, during that Ariana Grande concert. And now, on Saturday, three attackers screaming Islamic slogans mowed down pedestrians with a van in central London and then stabbed and slashed the survivors. Seven died. Many more were gravely wounded. London Bridge may not be falling down yet, but there is no doubt ISIS has a plan for that, too. Islamic terror attacks have become common in recent years, depressingly common, and each one provokes exactly the same response. Our leaders in government and the media tell us they're angry, and clearly they are, but at whom are they angry exactly? They shake their fists at the terrorists or the militants or the extremists or whatever the euphemism of the day happens to be at the time, and then they pledge that whatever happens, our civilization will never be bowed or shaken, although clearly we are both. But then they quickly turn their attention to the group they actually hate the most, far more than any terrorist, their critics. Anyone who dares question their leadership or criticizes their flaccid, mindless response to Islamic terror, those are their real enemies. Here, for example, is the response that Donald Trump got when he dared to point out that to a large extent, terror in the West is an immigration problem. Well, the president doesn't want us to be politically correct, right? So let's not be PC about this. Is the president trying to provoke a domestic terrorist attack with this uh, Twitter rant? Uh, because only to prove himself right. There are serious concerns about this president's mental stability. President Trump has been commenting on the London terrorist attack via Twitter. One of his posts in the past few hours said, quote, we must stop being politically correct and get down to the business of security for our people. If we don't get smart, it will only get worse. Do you feel the president is trying to perpetuate fear of terrorism by tweeting the way he has today? When was the last time you heard anyone on the left talk that way about Islamic extremism? Now, nobody on television openly defends ISIS, of course. ISIS is impossible to defend. But the real rage of these people is reserved for those who appear critical of Islam. Terrorism may be bad, but raising doubts about multiculturalism is worse. Foreigners come to our countries and kill our people. You'd think our leaders would blame them, but no, they blame us who live here. They blame our history, they blame our culture, our opinions, our religion. It's our fault. That is their core assumption, and you see it in all they say. Why else in the face of totalitarian threat would they so eagerly abandon our freedoms, beginning with speech? In the UK, for example, there have been multiple arrests for Islamophobic remarks made online, not actions, remarks. In the US, where courts still rhetorically observe the Bill of Rights, it falls to the private sector to censor speech. Facebook, Twitter, cable news. But the results are the same. Fanatics from other countries want to force us to change the way we live, and our leaders are, in effect, helping them because on at least one point, our leaders agree with ISIS. The West is not worth defending. That's how they feel. 